Today I'm sharing my updated minimal art kit for 2024. I've loved painting in plein air here in Colorado this spring and summer, and I'm excited to share my updated art supplies going into this wonderful and cozy fall season. I really feel like I figured out what works best for me, so I hope this video gives you some ideas. And as always, if you have any tips or supplies you want to share, leave a comment below. Hey there! If you're new here, I'm Jacqueline Bear. Here on my channel, I like to share my artistic journey, give helpful tips, and encourage you to go out in nature and create. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. My very first YouTube video was about my minimal art kit, and that was filmed a year and a couple of months ago, and since then, I have definitely swapped things out, changed it up, but the main thing is that I started sewing my own things. So my pencil pouch, my fanny pack that I'm about to show you, my artboard pouch. So I thought it was time to show you my updated minimal art kit. So first things first, I want to show you the fanny pack that I have sewn. Now this is just like a prototype. I have lots of things and features I want to, you know, figure out and whatnot, but this has been such a fun project for me to create my own actual fanny pack, which is pretty, pretty cool. So I wanna just walk you through all of the art supplies that I bring, show you the features of this fanny pack, what I wanna do differently. And it's been really fun being able to take this out, out on the trails, outdoors, anytime that I wanna go outside and draw or paint. So this is my fanny pack that I have created. It has a strap here on the back that is actually detachable if you didn't want the strap, but it's perfect to wrap around my waist when I'm sitting and painting. So it also comes off and these little flaps can be tucked in this back part. So then you just have kind of this little bag that you could also take to coffee shops and not have the strap be in your way. I also have done that. Um, I've also not had the strap so I could just have this sit there next to me when I'm painting outdoors, but I do like that I put a strap on it, but that it is like detachable if I want to do that. So here I have created these front mesh pockets to be able to put things in. I like to take my field notes and slide it in there and it looks really cute. I think in my next version of my fanny pack that also, I'm going to make this taller so I can also fit bigger sketchbooks or whatnot but I do like having these front pockets to just slip in a few little things, but nothing too valuable in case it did fall out. And I'll show you a few things that are like on the side. I already showed you the back, um, so let me show you that. So on the sides here, I added this like elastic band, and on this side, I made it just one all the way across, but on this side, I sewed down the middle so that there could be two in case you wanted to put little pencils or something with a clip so that I can hold on to it. I also tried out different tabs here. One is a little shorter, one is a little bit longer, so that you could also attach your strap here and have it more like a crossbody purse or something. So the sides are definitely like me testing out different things, which I thought was pretty, pretty fun to do. And it also has a little handle here. I think I might change the material of this. I want it to feel a little bit, I don't know, more luxurious to me um, than this more rough texture. More like this here. That's just like a little bit silkier feeling. And before I dive into what's inside, I did create this out of material that is more water resistant. I have a zipper here that is more water resistant as well. Um, just to keep everything more protected because here in Colorado, the afternoon thunderstorms can come like that. And I just want to be able to protect everything in here. And then obviously I also put this like in my bag that I'm hiking with or whatever bag I have if I'm just going on an easy trail. So I did create this with materials that does help me when I'm outside, more durable, all that jazz. So let's dive in to the actual bag. So this is the inside of my bag. I have lots of pouches. I have lots of little 
little things that we're going to get into. So, but first, since this is the biggest part, I have my sketchbook. Again, like I said, with this fanny pack, I want to make it a little taller so I can fit bigger sketchbooks, but this one fits like perfectly inside of it. And I really like this one. Then in the main compartment, I have a Ziploc bag. This is to pick up trash, pick up, you know, flowers or leaves that have fallen down that I want to press or something or anything that I want to collect. So it's really nice to just have a nice little plastic bag to collect those things. Then also in the main compartment here, you could just leave it open and have things sitting in there. But if you didn't know, I have also created a brand called Salka that has my pencil pouch and my board pouch and I'm going to be creating a few other little things, but this I like to hold all of my pencils in it. So I have my binder clips to hold down papers and a lot of pencils, paint brushes, all that type of stuff. So I do have my water brush. It's the same one that I had in my first video. I have not upgraded it. I thought maybe I'd want one with bigger bristles, but honestly, the tinier paintings I do, this works great. And you've probably seen this before, where in the handle it holds all the water and then you can squeeze it out and that is how the water comes out. And it's really nice to have on windy days on days you may have forgotten your water, but as long as you always have water in here, you'll be good. I also like to carry other brushes. So this one's fantastic, but I also am just so in love with this particular brush. Um, I do keep the plastic that it came with to always protect the bristles, so I always have that. But this is the Princeton Lauren Round 8 brush, and it's a bit stiffer of bristles. They bounce back um, they're not as flexible as maybe other bristles, but I love this for my painting and the way that I like to paint. So I bring this with me pretty much every time too. And then a newer brush for me is this Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half Mahler brush. This is fantastic for when I do paint a little bit larger and I want to put down a lot of water on my paper. Here in Colorado, it is so dry that my paper dries so quickly and my paints dry so quickly. So I try to do as much as I can with a spray bottle I'm about to show you, this brush to wet down and do like wet on wet techniques. So this is another useful tool that, um, that is new to my, to my kit. And as I mentioned, I have my little spray bottle. It's the same one I had from the past year and a half and it is fantastic. I love using this to spray down on my paint palette to get all of the paints just like a little bit more moist and it helps with my bristles as well on my brushes so that I'm not like scrubbing too much in there. I want to just keep it as moist and wet as possible, especially here in dry Colorado. And I usually go through all this water in one sitting, like that's how much I am spritzing it. <laughs> but this is really, really helpful. I also love to sketch my little sketches with a mechanical pencil. This is an upgrade I have. It's the Graph Gear 500 in the 0.5 lead. Um, I used to have a smaller lead, but it kept breaking on me. So I upgraded to this one and this, I don't know, I just like the grip of it. It works really well for me. It does come with an eraser. So as you can see, I have used it quite a bit. So that's really nice to have. Um, I really like the lead in this. It works really well for me. So I like using this to sketch with. I also always keep a nice pen inside in case I want to sketch with pens or add those final details sometimes to my paintings or even to sign my name. Um, right now I just have the Pigma Micron in the size 05 not a bad size. I also like the smaller ones like the 03 or the 01. Um, I really like these. I like that they are waterproof ink so that, it, so that it doesn't reactivate or activate with the water. So I usually have an array of these. Right now I just have this one as well as my jelly roll pen 
that is to add white highlights to things or sometimes if I tape down my painting the paint can seep through so sometimes I even use this to kind of touch up the sides and then I did tape um, my artist tape on here I did like a nice little amount so if I ever need tape to hold down any of my papers I can do that as well or get clean edges but I did just put it on on this pen and when I did it a little tip put the back side on so that you don't accidentally put this a little too high up there or too high you know on either side so that's helpful and then lastly in here I like to keep little tiny colored pencils that I like to sometimes outline my little panel of what I'm going to be painting um, I cut these in half actually for when I went on my through hike in Sweden these are the other halves of them so I actually brought these ones with me on to Sweden and I sharpened both ends so that I wouldn't have to sharpen too much um, so that was really helpful but now I like just having these um, so I can see the colors of what I'm using when I'm doing my videos so that is everything that I keep inside of this pencil pouch I made so I'm going to put all that in there and then start showing you the rest of the fanny pack so now I want to dive into what I put in all of the little pockets that I created. Um, I did try out a couple different fabrics. So on the front here, I have this stretchier fabric. So that's what I put in the back of my fanny pack. But then here on the front, the front inside, yeah, um, I did a more durable material, kind of like this green here, um, to test that out as well. So it's been really fun with this. I even lined it all with nice black, more uh, silky feeling. I'm really into making sure that like the textiles I work with all feel really nice for me because I like things to feel nice, especially when I'm out in nature. And it's just, it's a fun little experience for me to have. So let me show you what's inside. So as you can see, I have this nice lining material in here. And let's go through this pocket in the front. So I like to have my Sea to Summit shot glass to hold water. Um, I still use this. I love this so much. It's fantastic. I have a little kneaded eraser in this little plastic container. Um, it really helps so that lint and shavings and other little things that can get stuck to this kneaded eraser this just helps protect it um, a whole lot more. So this is really nice. And I love using this art graph, watercolor graphite. Um, I got this last summer and I love it so, so much. It is like a watercolor pan of graphite. You just get this wet, you paint with it. It looks beautiful. I have videos about it, so you can check that out if you wanna like dive deep into this. But I love bringing this because sometimes I don't want to paint with color. I just want to work on my values and just have a nice gray toned painting. And then I have clipped on here some itty bitty clips. These are fantastic to have. I always need them to clip my palette, to sometimes clip the paper, to hold things down. It's really, really helpful. So I always make sure I have a couple clipped on here. Now onto the little back pockets here. On this side, I have my art toolkit palette that I still love to use. I've put a sticker on here now of this cute little lupin. It's so cute. And I thought it was perfect for this when I saw these little stickers. Um, I got this in Crested Butte, I think, or somewhere around there. I was like, that's perfect for my palette. It just makes it so adorable. And this is what it looks like. Um, I don't remember what it looked like when I showed it a year and a half ago, but this is what it is now where I've updated with more colors. Um, I've lost one of these little ones because that happens a lot <laughs> to me. Sometimes the colors I don't use as much will dry up and then they look like that and they fall out. So I just need to put a lot more water on this and stick this back in. But all the rest seem to be, that one's a little loose. Like I've noticed that with certain colors that they they shrink in these. So I think when I fill them, I need to like 
almost go to the edges to make sure it like really sticks it in there but it's an easy fix but this is my palette and then I'm still using this little Swedish towel um, that I got I cut it in half and I just folded it to where it just kind of stays like that and this is what I like to use to wipe off my my brushes with water on it and it's come in handy so many times especially if I've spilt water or something you can just you know mop it up so this is really helpful and then I have this little container to hold my Jaclyn Bear art cards I still have the same ones that I had from before um, I'd like to update these at some point because I don't even have my YouTube on here because I created this before I started YouTube. Um, but I got this little case to go with it because I noticed these were getting really dirty when they were just hanging out in my bag. And then tucked in here, I have my Joshua Tree SBF 15 lip balm. I always have lip balm. I have so many of these that I put in like every single thing of mine because once you accidentally sunburn your lips, you never want to do that again. So this is really helpful. And then I have extra lead, but I'm realizing this is for my other pencil. So I need to find my lead of my 0.5 to fit into my graph gear one. Um, I didn't realize I had the wrong one in here, but it's always good to have extra lead when you can carry it. Just kidding, here is my 0.5 to be lead. So I did have both of them, but I guess I don't need this anymore. We put it away. <laughs> so I like having extra lead, yet even just a spare lead for my pencil. So now I'm going to show you my, my artboard bag so you can see how I put this all together. So you may have seen this before. This is the Salka brand that I created where I'm I'm sewing artboard bags, art pencil pouches, other things that are coming up. So I want to show you what's inside of this. So in here, I like to have my artboard that I created. This is the same one I've had for a long time. Um, the only update I have done to this is I cut out a circle so it can easily fit my water so now it sticks out on the bottom so you can't really like set this down because then it comes out but it is so much easier to hold with one hand and just have my water there and if you want it on the right side you just flip it over and you can have it over here if that works better for you but i have so enjoyed being able to put this in this little hole so that's been really nice and then again i always just have these clips always clip to things so I can hold things down. And then I have an array of papers in here that I've either taken out of little notepads I had or torn them from big sheets. I like just having different sizes of papers and it's really nice because then you can take it and you can either clip it, you could tape it down. I found out actually that I like clipping down my papers. It's just been much easier for me to clip it down, have this in here, and then clip my... I like being able to just clip things. I found out that that's a lot quicker. So the tape that I have is sometimes if I want to mask out like anything to get a straighter line or something. But I used to tape it down, but now I like to clip it. So this has been a really nice setup for me. And then I also would put this on here and like clip it on as well. It's been really, really helpful. I love having this fun little setup, but I also want to show you another setup. So I got this Kari sketchbook easel. Um, it's by a gal named Rebecca, and I got it on Etsy, and it is so helpful. It also has a circle here to fit your water cup. It also has this space for your pencils or pens or whatnot. And then there's these magnets so that you don't even have to clip these type of palettes. See that? That this like fits perfectly right there so it fits nice and snug. I love this so much and it has this notch here. Let me show you how to set that up. So I like to use this a lot with my sketchbooks. So I like to use my board that I made when I'm doing loose papers but when I bring my sketchbooks I really like using this. 
So you take that notch and you put it right into your sketchbook. You can use clips to hold it down. Actually, put this on here first. And I'm just gonna clip over here. So this is what I like to use when I'm doing my sketchbook um, to have my water, my paint palette. You could also take this and clip it on there as well if you wanted to. Um, this is just perfect to use and it's also one-handed and I love it. I love having my clips so the pages aren't flipping around in the wind. It's just a really nice setup, especially when I'm doing sketchbook versus um, single pieces of paper. When I do single pieces of paper, I definitely love to use the the not so pretty looking one, but it does it does the job and I really like using this as well. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am so grateful that you are here. This journey of doing YouTube for the past year and however many months has been just so wonderful. I have loved building this community and if you're new here, welcome. And I hope that this inspired you to make your own minimal art kit to get outside and go in mother nature. It could be a park, it could be downtown, it could be on a trail, wherever you find yourself. I hope that this video has helped you come up with little minimal art supplies and details and things that, that should inspire you to get out and, and go paint. I just love being outdoors and I love sharing that with you. And I'm just so grateful for you being here and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.